We're gathered here today to bear witness to the joining of two research forces. We have the king that is Google and the queen that is artificial intelligence. Or perhaps they're both kings. We don't actually know. But what we do know is research is restructuring their household. And here's how it's going to affect you. So you know how we like to say things like, remember when we used to have to read book after book in libraries? Soon we'll be saying something similar about sifting through article after article on Google. Because much like the way Google transformed researching in libraries, artificial intelligence is transforming how we research using Google. To be clear, no, this is not the end of Google. It simply has to share the crown for king of research. Matter of fact, let's talk about how they're different. So let's start with the purpose. The purpose of Google is that it's a search engine designed to bring you links to information located on the internet. Now, artificial intelligence, let's say a program like ChatGPT, is designed as an interactive tool that will find that information and also intellectually process it and then deliver it to you in a conversational medium. This is why I like the comparison of Google and the library, because artificial intelligence is simply the next step in the evolution of research. And to be clear, as of now, there is no artificial intelligence program that is trained on the entirety of information on Google or on the internet for that matter. There are limitations to all the different programs, which we'll get into later on in the video. Now let's move on to how you interact with these programs, starting with your input. So if you go to Google, you're gonna perform a search query. And a query is essentially where you put in a set of keywords centered around a topic you wanna to research, and it's gonna pull up articles related to those keywords. So let's say you go to Google Scholar, for instance, you might type in something like, time management strategies for college students, okay? Now, ChatGPT is somewhat similar in the regard that when you perform a search, which is called prompting, you are using keywords related to your research. The difference is, is because it is a language processing tool, well, you have a lot more flexibility on how you word those prompts. And you get the option to refine those prompts until you're satisfied with the results. Whereas Google populates that list of articles and then puts pass and then passes the baton to you. This brings me to their capabilities. As we just uncovered, Google has the capability to populate articles based on the search query. Now, a program like ChatGPT can also populate articles based on the search query, but it can take this a step further by screening those articles based on what you ask it to screen for. Not only that, it can synthesize the information, it could summarize the information, or it can even create new content, new material to summarize all this. I like to say that programs like ChatGPT are information processing machines. But that's the thing, because they are information processors, you need to be aware that it may process information incorrectly or sometimes inaccurately. Matter of fact, there's always a disclaimer at the bottom of the screen reminding you of this. And this brings me to the other limitation of ChatGPT specifically, and that is that it's right now only trained on data that dates back to 2021. Quite frankly, these couple of limitations, I wouldn't be surprised if they're hammered out pretty quickly with how fast artificial intelligence is evolving. Now, going back to the time management example, I want to demonstrate how you can use ChatGPT to find research and then help you synthesize and summarize that research. If you're interested, be sure to check out this video now.